we saved one of the best interviews we've had this week for last because we want to end the show today on this wonderful and somewhat wet Wednesday with some very, very good news for those of you who are like me, big fans of the movies. I love going to the movie theater. The experience is amazing. And, you know, because of the coronavirus pandemic, the entire movie making industry has been turned upside down. Movie making, movie distribution and movie exhibition. But things are starting to get better. And who better to tell us about what is going on? And we are going to set you guys up with a little bit of prize of your own, too, than Terry Flores from Tango Theater, who is opening on February the 5th on Friday. So, Terry, half a day and congratulations. I guess that's the first way. Half a day and good morning, Jason, Sabrina, and, of course, our favorite Chris. <laughs> not that you're not our favorites. But, yeah, good morning. And uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to touch base with you and uh, your listeners our loyal patrons. We're reopening Micronesia Mall Theaters on February 5, which is this Friday. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to be showing new movies and uh, just one uh, rewatch of uh, one old movie uh, issued in 2017, which is Hidden Figure. So if you're wondering what movies we're going to show, it's uh, Promising Young Woman, which is uh, the highly anticipated movie and well-reviewed one starring uh, Carrie Mulligan. The Mask uh, Man, which uh, stars Liam Neeson. This is an action thriller. Very nice. Uh, the, the Little Things, uh, the Denzel Washington star. Uh, Wonder Woman 1984. I'm pretty Ooh. sure a lot of families would like to watch that on the big screen. Earwig and the Witch. And um, there's another one that I forget right now because we've got, you know, we're so excited to reopen our doors again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, what is your what is your staff feeling right now? Because, I mean, I know... It's such a fun job to have when you you bring the movie viewing experience to people and everything like that from, you know, from the ushers to the people who at the ticketing counter and, you know, um, the people that work in the at the snack bar and everything like that. What is your team? What's the, the tempo for them right now? And how excited are they to get back to work in a in a safe and healthy way, of course? Well, you know, we saw the reopening team yesterday. We uh, had a meeting. We had some retraining. If, you know, they, all of them are really excited. They have been, since we closed down, we have this uh, WhatsApp group and they keep on asking, hey, when are we going to reopen, blah, blah, blah. We're standing by, blah, blah, blah. And we, when we saw them yesterday, um, it was, I tell you, a relief. After all these months, we finally saw each other again. To them, it is excitement coupled with anxiety, of course, mm -hmm. because aside from giving uh the best customer service they could ever give, which is what they think of every day. They are anxious about keeping everybody safe, not just them, but most of all, our patrons. So so that leads me to the logical next question, Terry, is um, like, what is the movie going experience going to be for us as patrons? So when we go there, you know, what's the seating arrangement going to be like? You know, how do we have to, uh, you know, what equipment and personal protective equipment do we have to bring? And, you know, what's the experience going to be like? Okay, we're operating now in what we call the new normal. You you know, you've heard that uh, mm -hmm. phrase said several months ago, way back then. But yes, uh, following the new normal, uh, Tango Theaters um, have, uh, in, we have instituted um, safe and healthy protocols, enhanced safe and healthy protocols that uh, were designed to keep our patrons in mind. At the same time, they comply with uh, policies that were developed by the Center for Disease Control, the National Association of Theater Owners, our Guam Public Health, and uh, Cinema Safe. Cinema Safe is an agreement that was inked by NATO members, the National Association of Theater Owners, and Tango Inc. is one of them. So uh, as far as the protocols are concerned, first of all, uh, we know that mass is mandatory from the uh, lobby down to the auditorium. So we're going to ask our guests to please put on their mask at all times. Of course, when you're eating or drinking, you'll have to remove your mask. But uh, and you know, you have to put the mask back on after you do that. Again, this is for safety reasons. Mm -hmm. We want to keep uh, the movie going experience safe. The second thing is that um, there will be cleaning after every uh, screening of the movie. So if you will look at the show times, which will be up on our website uh, within the next two days, there will be a delay 
Uh, it wasn't like before where every hour we will be changing movies or we will be screening movies. This time around, we have a gap of 45 minutes to make sure that uh, we clean the auditoriums for uh, the uh, next batch of audience. Um, and then we are promoting cashless payment, not just at the box office, but our concessions as well. Now you can call in and pre-order your food and then just pay at the concessions when you get there. Eee, this helps, fancy <laughs> now. Yeah, I mean, this helps ease the lines, both at the box office and the concessions. Well, so I'm gonna feel like a movie star when I go to the movies. <laughs> I was like, look at yeah, this, I can just call in my order. And it's like, and you know, I got popcorn. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, different times, different measures. And mm. this is one way that we're adapting to uh, the new normal, making it easier for everybody. And most of all, safer for everybody, mm. not just our team members, but most of all, our patrons to uh, go to the movies. And, and then, Terry, I, I love how you were talking about, you know, the fact that, you know, the delays between the show times are like a little bit more extended so that your staff can properly sanitize and disinfect uh, each theater. I was also wondering, was it a struggle for you to kind of like balance, like, you know, should we have more show times throughout the day and into the night to kind of like make sure that enough people have enough opportunities to actually go and see the movie they want to without, you know, because of course everybody's going to want to go to the movies. And then you have the fact that because of, capacity restrictions, certain people are just going to say, oh, I wasn't able to go because, you know, they, they already reached 50% or whatever like that. So do, do you actually see more show times coming up in the future? Eventually we may do so, but right now uh, auditoriums are at 50% capacity. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we're increasing air filtration, air filtration between 50% to 100%. And this is always keeping and bearing in mind the safety and health of our uh, patrons. You were asking, you know, um, how is it like as a business to operate the theaters at that capacity? It wasn't a struggle, Jason. It was more of a conscious decision uh, of um, prioritizing the health and well-being of everybody, not just our team members, but our patrons as well. Very nice. I'm, I'm very, so very well, impressed. We hope, yeah, we hope that as we move forward, as we flatten the curve, we will be able to get more movies. We will be able to increase capacity. And um, yeah, I mean, just um, provide entertainment to our community. Mm -hmm. Terry, can you talk a little bit about uh, any of the uh, challenges and, and maybe how you overcome? Uh, because I know nationally, uh, theaters aren't, uh, a lot of them aren't open. So with the distribution of uh, movies, we've seen some of the studios kind of migrate towards um, online or, or whatever. So. Uh, which movies are you guys going to show? And then uh, what's it like out there, um, the climate for just like theaters uh, getting some of these new releases? Well, the film, uh, the movie distribution industry and the film industry itself really faced a lot of challenge in 2020. We had theaters closing nationwide, big chain theaters just shutting their doors and saying, okay, temporarily we're closed and people are asking, when are you going to reopen? Of course, uh, reopening of uh, theaters depend on the uh, state. If there is a high COVID incidence, then they remain shut down. But the National Association of Theater Owners have always uh, provided guidance, have always watched uh, the trend uh, nationwide. Um, Domestic wise, it was a struggle, believe me, because number one, we have um, a lot of movies that were ready to roll out, but they had to make a choice whether or not they will issue it or not. As you know, HBO Max uh, came up with this scheme of uh, premiering their movies both on their online platform mm -hmm. and also in the theaters. I mean, that is really a um, novel move uh it was there was a lot of discussion involved in that but you know the the distributors made their choice and uh, that is something they're looking at the second thing too is um the uh, blockbuster movies that were going to be shown in uh summer of last year when we had the lockdown a lot of them uh, were moved to november of 2020 with the hopes that by that time we would have already um flatten the curve for uh, COVID, but it wasn't the case in uh, the US. And so now they have moved all these movies. Uh, for example, uh, the latest James Mond movie was again moved uh, to October of this year. Um, 
there was a lot of discussion because you know where the product placements are at the movies they have to reshoot those scenes mm. and then again uh, you have black widow which was supposed to open in it was the opening movie for the summer season of 2020 right now it's still up in the air whether they will release that in disney plus or is going to do its uh, theater run the um association is looking at the movement of um uh the states the state, the nationwide um, movement of how they are going to reopen, and but we're lucky here on Guam. Yeah, you know, yeah. we have, I think, I believe, flattened the curve. That's why it was deemed safe for us to reopen. So the movies that we're getting will be a combination of new movies and flashbacks. Terry, uh, but we're going to be very picky and choosy of the flashback movies that right. we're going to show. It's going to be like that for the next couple of months right. until again we get a hold of this virus. I'm pretty sure you guys have a huge catalog of uh, you know uh, recent, uh, maybe even not so recent, big blockbusters that people maybe want to see in a movie theater setting, right? Oh yes, definitely. And so you know the movies that we're showing for our opening salvo. Uh, it was good that uh, we're getting the new ones, but again, moving forward, it's a matter of uh, probably uh, month to month anticipating what the distributors are going to give us. It's it's not only us who are being challenged by this. The distributors are as well because, again, um, shooting a film is difficult now because you can't have physical contact. Uh, there's got to be this physical distancing so they're trying to find ways movie um movie distributors are trying to find ways to safely shoot a, a film they have their own um stockpile of uh, movies that right. need to be shown but once those are done and over with what's next and that is the question that is uh, being pondered on by the association and being dealt with by the association members as well uh, Terry, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and let you go, but six three seven double oh ninety four guys, that's the number here on the link. We're gonna give away uh, two pairs of movie passes, and uh, we'll give you all the details. But thank you so much for these, Terry. A great way to share with our audience. Yeah, thank you, Terry. Because Sabri Sabrina Thanks, is Terry. all about Black Widow. Chris can't wait for you know the James Bond movie, and I'll be the first one in line for Top Gun too. Let me tell you guys, the Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four. That is definitely one that you want to experience on yes. the on the big screen. <laughs> Right. Well, thank you so much uh, to the link. Thank you so much, Jason, uh, Sabrina, and Chris. And again, um, we're inviting our Guam community. Tango Theaters at Micronesia Mall is opening this February 5th. First show of the day is at 12 noon. We hope to see you there. I will see you this weekend, Terry. Oh, yeah. Congratulations, <laughs> Terry. Thank you so much. You right. have a good one. Take you care. Too. Tell Diana I said hi. I will do that. Thank you. <laughs> there Bye. You go. Bye. Okay, so we'll take the first two callers, 637-0094. Phone started ringing off the hook as soon as you said already. that. Right. Uh, you didn't even finish saying the numbers, like 637. <laughs> we'll give you a couple passes to uh, go see the movies at uh, Tango Theaters. Bree, good job today. Good Any job. takeaways you want to jam out here? Uh, no, there's a public hearing, uh, a couple of public hearings today dealing with um, the economy. Uh, one should already be underway, then there's another one at 2 o'clock. Uh, there's also Janelle Carrera. She was on show. She clarified uh, information and in a story that was uh, in the media regarding uh, the 18 quarantine, uh, uh, 18 positive cases from the government quarantine facility. Um, I think it was reported that they were from two large families. It's actually 11 different families, 11 different households, um, and they arrived on Guam be between January 19th through the 26th. And so they're doing all the contact.